universe is back, baby. It's just as real as the One Piece. I swear the One Piece is real. Check out Manga Storian. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about the old Ultimate Universe because the new Ultimate Universe started out slow and weird and convoluted and I really felt like it should have been a longer series, but whatever, it doesn't matter. We got Spider-Man back and it's incredible. But the old one, that had a lot of problems, and I thought it'd be fun to talk about those today as to what actually happened with the original Ultimate Universe and what my theory is as to why it just stopped succeeding. Today's episode is brought to you by the Razer Isker version 2. Did I pronounce that right? We don't know, but if you're looking for the product, it's Razer. R-A-Z-E-R Isker. I-S-K-U-R. How is it different from the version one? Well, it has a wider shoulder arch, an adaptive lumbar, and reduced side bolsters. And from sitting on it for long extended periods of time to play my video games, it catches my farts awesomely because it's that freaking comfortable. What are you looking for in a gaming chair? You're looking for something that is crazy comfortable and something that has an adaptive lumbar support system. It allows me to not have back pain from long hours of playing Destiny. And let's not forget about the softer, plushier seat base, which is great for catching your farts. On top of that, with their unrestricted seating experience, you get 27% seat pan width in the back and 30% seat pan width in the front. What does that mean? I have no idea, but it seems like a selling point if you really care about your chairs. In all honesty, guys, though, this chair is really comfortable. I'm really enjoying it. We first got it, and I thought it was going to be like every other gaming chair. But no, I've actually really been enjoying it, and I don't think I need to buy another chair for a little while because this is stupid comfortable. So I highly recommend it. Click the link down below if you want to get your hands on one of these. It is a commission link, and we would greatly appreciate your support with us and our sponsors. So the original Ultimate Universe was the Ultimate Comics line. It came out in the early 2000s and proved to be wildly successful for a very short period of time. Why did we make the original Ultimate Comics? Well, contrary to what a lot of people would like you to believe happened in the 90s, the 90s was not good for comic books. Coming out of the 70s, the comic books were thought to be goofy and funny and just for children. So to counteract that, mid-80s, we started to get dark, gritty, violent, and edgy. We were doing things like Dark Knight Returns, breaking Batman's back, killing off Superman, going with a Spider-Man wedding and dealing with a clone saga. And I don't even know what Wolverine was doing, but he was in everything, and that meant that everything Thing was him saying bub and cutting things in half. Comics at an all-time high towards the beginning of the 90s, coming out of the 80s with all of these dark and gritty storylines. Marvel even attempted to make a dark and gritty imprint known as the 2099 imprint in 1992. But as the 90s began to wane on, problems within the comic book industry began to become more prominent. And there was a lot of issues with finances at that point. This is during the period when Marvel was filing for bankruptcy. And DC had put out the Batman and Robin movie that no one liked and it was too colorful and too aimed at kids. No one knew what was going on with comics. But one prevailing theory in the 90s was that 60 years of continuity within the comic book world was creating problems. That this is why things like 2099 did well when it started, because there was not as much continuity issues. You're starting with a brand new continuity. Now, 2099 was considered a success because it kind of piggybacked off of Spider-Man and then created a bunch of superheroes. What Marvel doesn't know in hindsight now is that none of that other stuff worked. Only Spider-Man worked in 2099. They then attempted to reboot the Marvel line multiple times with the idea that the continuity was the problem. Both DC and Marvel were trying to revitalize the comic book industry by fixing the continuity issues. This is when DC decided to do their crisis, not crisis moments. One of the biggest successes of the 80s and kind of cleaned up things was Crisis on Infinite Earths, where they just cleaned up all the continuity errors. So in the late 90s, they decided to try it again with Zero Hour, but it really wasn't working as well. Marvel made their own attempt with Heroes Reborn, which was the original version, not the Jason Aaron recent one, but the original one. The basic concept between this one was that during the battle against Onslaught, Franklin Richards had created a pocket universe with his perfect versions of the superheroes. They then brought in Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, who had left Marvel at the time, to run the Heroes Are Born line. The idea was, if they can be edgier and do their own thing over at Image Comics, well, why not bring them in to do their own continuity within Marvel? Except it tanked. It didn't do well. It wasn't doing what they wanted. So it quickly, quietly got kind of shoved off to the side and became a miniseries as opposed to being a new continuity. 
It was pretty much established and agreed upon at both Marvel and DC at this time that continuity was the big issue. It worked really well in the early years of your favorite superheroes such as Spider-Man or Batman because there wasn't a lot of history to understand. But we were entering into a point where they had 60 to like 40 years of continuity depending on your favorite superhero. The answer felt like they just needed another reboot and they were attempting it even though Heroes Reborn failed and Zero Hour wasn't considered a success either. Now DC decided to just go back and kind of do a different take. They leaned more heavily into their sidekicks, turning them into a legacy kind of a thing, which a lot of people ended up enjoying. But it was a lot of growing pains to go in that direction. Marvel's idea was why don't we try starting again? They had received the idea of doing the ultimate imprint line from Bill Jemus. And the idea was completely start over, but we're going to do this alongside main timeline comics. The concept was simple. If you were that fan who had been reading your favorite comic book all of this time or didn't really care about the continuity issues, your version of Spider-Man or the X-Men or Captain America would not go away. But to aim to that younger crowd who wanted more television show based stuff, the uh, the wiki actually mentions Matrix as one of the big things. I don't remember. Ma I mean, I remember Matrix being a big deal. I do. But I wouldn't look at it and be like, everything has to be like the Matrix. I, I never thought of it like that, but hey, I was young, so maybe I was in that demographic where they're just looking for people. But they were looking to basically come up with the idea of, let's start a brand new universe, we'll come at it with all brand new origins, brand new characters, and tell stories that don't reflect how the characters act within the main universe, so it's something different. This will be a way to target at a younger audience, they're trying to aim for that like 14 to 16 year old demographic, but they'll also maintain regular comic books for their older demographic who haven't leapt. And that was the birth of the Ultimate Universe. Now, originally, Ultimate Spider-Man was going to be a retelling of the original story. But they decided they didn't like those uh, scripts that were sent in. Instead, they hired a then-unknown writer, Brian Michael Bendis, to write Spider-Man. And his idea was to take Spider-Man and not do it like a comic. Make the Ultimate Universe feel different from the regular mainline universe. So his version wasn't going to have thought bubbles, wasn't going to have long exposition. It was going to be treated like it was a TV show. He actually wanted to make sure that the suit wasn't revealed in the first issue. That was one thing I actually really appreciated by Hickman's new version of Ultimate Spider-Man. They kept that like mentality moving forward. What made Ultimate Spider-Man a success? Everyone likes to think of Ultimate Spider-Man as a success because it was like 100, a little over 100, but a concurrent story for 100 issues that had a beginning, middle, and end. Like your favorite manga, your favorite anime, Spider-Man wasn't allowed to continue on until it just got, got, got terrible, it got boring. And a lot of people like to contribute that to being the success of Spider-Man, but you need to think about when Ultimate Spider-Man started, the original one, not the new one, the original Ultimate Universe. Nobody knew that that is what was going to happen. No one knew that we were going to get 111 issues of Brian Michael Bendis and the uh, artist. I believe it was Mark Bagley who did the original. No one knew that that's what was going to happen. At the time, it was just a different way to tell a comic book story with a fresh beginning, a brand new origin, brand new take on the character, and it was going to be interesting. It was going to be an entirely new universe for people to get excited about. What I also find funny about this, and I'll explain why I find a lot of this funny in a moment, is that one of the key factors that they attribute to being part of the success of Ultimate Spider-Man number one is because they put it in Walmart and pay less shoes. Now, it's kind of funny, both things I just brought up. Because these are both arguments that have happened in the comic book industry over the last five years. People have argued up and down that we need true reboots because continuity is getting confusing and they don't really know what's going on. And Marvel's trying too hard to match up to the MCU. While DC, who knows what's going on? We want them to change and get better and get new. But don't change too much. You gotta change just a little so that I don't feel upset with your changes. It's been a constant argument. And apparently these were the arguments we were having in the late 90s. Now bear in mind, I was a lot younger in the late 90s. So I'm not going to go into it because then you'll realize how old I am. But I was a lot younger in the late 90s. So a lot of the industry side of stuff, didn't care about. I'm just reading comics. They're fun to read. But what I also find interesting is recently we had an argument where DC tried to get their comic books into Walmart and Target. Maybe just Walmart. And everyone freaked out. And they were like, you're going to kill the local comic book store. When apparently that's attributed to the success of the original Ultimate Spider-Man. No wonder they were trying to put it in Walmart. Also, Payless Shoes. I haven't seen one of those in forever. I'm pretty sure it shut down or got bankrupt or maybe it's just nowhere near me. I don't know. 
But have you ever decided, like, I'm going to go buy a new pair of kicks, and when I get in there, I'm going to buy a comic book? I That never never crossed my mind. I don't know. <laughs> so Ultimate Universe kicked off a Spider-Man. Everyone loved it, and it was on, like, a like skyrocketing. It was doing so well. It was doing much better than the original Marvel comic line, but they never got rid of the original Marvel comic line. Now, the original Ultimate Universe then launched a couple of other titles. We had Ultimate X-Men, which was exactly the opposite of Brian Michael Bendis' Spider-Man. Brian Michael Bendis' Spider-Man was more focused on being like a TV show, being fun, being campy, kind of having a good time with it, while the X-Men run by Mark Millar was more focused on being political and looking at the political angles of what being a mutant would mean and how all of this could play in. They were exact opposites of each other, and they both did very well. Uh, one thing I find interesting about this is apparently Mark Millar did not know anything about the X-Men. It's literally noted as he knew nothing. The only thing he knew was the 2000s X-Men movie, and he wrote the book based around that. Fun, interesting fact, in my opinion, because one of the other big arguments we have today is that the writers aren't paying attention to continuity and they don't know the history of the characters. Because apparently that got you jobs back then, too. So anyway, <laughs> guys. History repeats itself, apparently. <laughs> anyway, this led to eventually launching the Ultimates line, which was their version of the Avengers, where we had a very... Uh, I It's not listed anywhere here, but I heard someone recently when I was talking to people about uh, the Ultimates universe, the Ultimate universe and all that stuff, and it was brought up... Because in here, it was literally listed as Captain America was just more of a brash soldier type. And someone else that I was talking to was like, man, I don't miss Captain America being toxic masculinity. And I'm like, wait, what? I don't remember that from the Ultimates run at all. But apparently that's how people see Captain America back in the day. As an ex-soldier myself, I kind of disagree with that. But I thought it was a funny thing to note that apparently Captain America of the 2000s in the Ultimate Universe is considered toxic masculinity. But anyway, uh, we also had a cannibalistic Hulk and we had a Thor which apparently they never confirmed. I thought it was confirmed that he was fake, but according to the wiki article, it was never confirmed. But apparently that Thor, it was tossed up if he was actually an Asgardian or a crazy guy who was psychotic and found weapons to make him act like Thor. I thought it was resolved and he was a crazy guy who found weapons and thought he was Thor. But hey, live and learn, right? Uh, this is also when they decided to remodel Nick Fury to look like Samuel L. Jackson, which was so popular that the MCU picked it up, which then got him even more popular, and that's when they ended up replacing Nick Fury in the main timeline. If you're curious about what happened to the old white Nick Fury, it was the original Sin storyline, where as punishment for everything he had done, he was cast to the moon and no one remembered him anymore, or they thought he died. It was one of those. They didn't remember him or they thought he died. But he was turned into the new Watcher, so... If you're wondering whatever happened to him, they did actually write him out of continuity. Uh, Rob from Comics Explained recently told me that they resolved that in the Fantastic Four run or something like that. But uh, regardless, uh, that's where he ended up going. So here's where things got interesting. Like in terms of like the wild and crazy successes started to end. And I, in my memory, thought it went much longer. I did not realize that the Ultimates line of comics was really a blip in the history of comics. So it started in 2001 with Ultimate Spider-Man. In 2004, the guy who decided to create this whole thing got fired. So he was canned. Uh, I can't find what exactly happened. What I can find is due to a number of controversies and a failure of a comic book line, Bill Jemis was fired from Marvel. He, this was his creation. This is what he made. I really deep dive trying to figure out exactly what those controversies were. Because when you talk to me about there being controversies, I always get interested. I hate drama, everyone. But I like to watch drama when it's over there. It's over there. I don't want to be in it. But I want to see it happening. I want to see... Like, if you ever go to, like, a dinner, right? And you're, like, you're, you're going on a date or you're hanging out with your buddies. And two tables over, somebody is arguing. And they're like, oh, we're having a divorce or we're breaking up. I'm, like, I'm eavesdropping. I'm, like... Oh, what did he do? What was that? That's how I feel like once I found out this, this drama had been going on, I was like, what did he do? What happened? But I, I couldn't find anything on it. So, And then they also had somebody come in to write an Ultimate Iron Man book, which I didn't know existed. And it makes sense why I didn't know it existed. It was so poorly received, it was written out as being only a TV show in continuity of the Ultimates universe. So that Ultimate Iron Man would not be ruined by this bad book. So it explains why I never heard about that. Because around this time period, I would have just joined the army. 
So I would have been a little more focused on other things going on at the time. Uh, Jeff Loeb came in to write a third Ultimates miniseries. They were going to do another one about the Ultimates, the Avengers of the Ultimate Universe, which eventually led to the first giant crossover. So without Bill Jemis on the project anymore, Joe Quesada was now in charge. Joe Quesada, a few years later, decided that the sales of the Ultimate Universe were kind of going down. The only thing that was succeeding was Ultimate Spider-Man, which, you know, now we all know why, because it was amazing by the time it wrapped up. But it was the only big thing that was succeeding. So in 2008... Sales of the Ultimate Universe are kind of going down, okay? So it's decided that we're doing this crossover, and it's known as Ultimatum. Ultimatum is panned as being one of the worst events ever written by Marvel, okay? And is also attributed to being what eventually caused the complete downfall of the Ultimate Universe. Uh, let me just give you uh, uh, eight of the, the most disturbing things in Ultimatum, as written by CBR. Blob eats the wasp. Giant Man eats the blob. The destruction of Manhattan due to Magneto. Magneto kills Professor X. Cyclops dies. The death of Cyclops. Angel gets eaten by Sabretooth. Whoever was writing Ultimatum loved to see superheroes eat each other, apparently. Latveria is frozen. Wolverine dies. Dormammu kills Doctor Strange. And these panels are, like, disgusting and nasty and shows people be... The whole idea is at the third Ultimates run, they decided to sell it off shock value. And it did sell. So Ultimatum's idea was go balls to the wall crazy with shock value. A lot of the, the panels that pop up in memes or things that people are like, holy crap, that happened. Like the blob eating the wasp panel shows up a lot of times in memes and on Reddits and things like that. It's from Ultimatum. That's what it's all from. I mean, I'm looking at a panel right now the thing grabs Dr. Doom's head and just squashes it. And he's holding the blood and guts in his hand and it's dripping. This was the comic that was supposed to revitalize the Ultimate Universe. And in this comic, they killed off fan favorites, destroyed the planet, and basically... How was that going to relaunch the Ultimate Universe? You killed Wolverine, Cyclops, Professor X, Doctor Doom. Pretty, I don't remember if, if uh, Magneto ended up dying at the end of this. I don't remember that at all. But if he did, you killed him off too. Uh, and then you got, it was just, it was just insane. It was insane. And I th I'm pretty sure it sold well when it came out, but it's attributed to being the end of the ultimate universe. Oh, no, never mind. It didn't sell well. It's listed right here. It's a critical and commercial failure. Uh, and it's been regarded as one of the worst comic books of all time. All time. I've read a lot of bad comics, but that is the worst one of all time, apparently. It is also attributed to decreasing the sales of the entire imprint, uh, and they never returned to their pre-Ultimatum numbers. So from 2001 to 2008, they were successful, and then they killed it. They canceled Ultimate X-Men. They canceled all Ultimate Fantastic Four. Uh, they were given one final issue to close out their entire lines, and then the entire line was relaunched as the Ultimate Comics line. They did a full relaunch of the Ultimate Universe. Because it was that bad. It did that terrible. Now, the relaunch didn't actually relaunch anything. Ultimate Comics uh, Spider-Man continued what Spider-Man was doing at the time. And then you had Ultimate Comics Avengers that came out. And you had Ultimate Comics New Ultimates. Over the course of our, like, 2009 period onward, we had a couple more big events happen. They did their own little inner crossover. Bear in mind, that, uh, as far as I can see, they only had three comics going at this time. Like, the whole line shrunk down to just three comics ongoing. Uh, we killed off Peter Parker and the death of Spider-Man, leading into the Miles Morales era, uh, which was still by Bendis, still did that. Uh, X-Men came back eventually, also as well, uh, and that was pretty much it. One big problem with the Ultimate Universe was that the Marvel heads decided they never wanted to do a true crossover with the main Marvel Universe. They wanted the Ultimate Comics to be their own thing, and they never had to cross over with the main comics. But in 2012, that was thrown out the window. We had a book called Spider-Men. Spider-Men is a book featuring Miles Morales and Peter Parker. Peter Parker from the main universe crosses over, talks to Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man, and approves him as being Spider-Man. Uh, then following that, the sales kept going down, and so it was decided to end the entire universe in the Secret Wars event, in which the Beyonders were crushing planets between their thumbs. As far as I'm concerned, they were just smashing them all together to see what would happen. Uh, honestly, I had, to, I had forgotten what the... Like, I remember Secret Wars. Secret Wars was great. I forgot the actual plot, like why it was happening. Uh, I think Sal's the one that informed me. Uh, that it was they had placed a uh, molecule man in every universe to explode just to see what would happen. I was like, oh, 
Good thing I don't remember that, because that sounds like a really dumb reason for Secret Wars to have actually happened. <laughs> but the story for Secret Wars was great. And if I'm wrong, go to Common Pop and yell at Sal for telling me that. So now we're at the point of where I've gone over the entire history of the original Ultimate Universe. Fun fact, there have been two attempts to revive the Ultimate Universe that I know of that are not this Hickman run. Uh, those would be at the end of Spider-Man number two, which came out in 2017. The evil version of Miles Morales, which was an adult working for Kingpin, went back to the destroyed Ultimate Universe to find that it actually had been revived. Peter Parker had come back from the dead and joined the Ultimates. And they never did anything with that. The other time was during the periods, uh, I kind of counted as one or two, but basically Maker, which is, this is funny, Maker went back. He went back to the Ultimate Universe. I think it was in the Venom run. He went back to the universe. Apparently that was ignored because if in the current way that they've revitalized the Ultimate Universe, he didn't mention that and just said, I'm going to make a new one. So I, what I'm picturing happening is he went over there and it was destroyed and he was like, forget this. I can make it better. And he went back to 616, made an Ultimate Universe and said, I'm never going to talk about that again because it's scarring me for life. That. That's what I assume happened. But now we're at the core of the video. The problem with the Ultimate Universe. This video is about the original Ultimate Universe. I do think this new one has a high chance of being good. They're getting star writers on it. They're doing what they did with the original to make it work. Will it work in 10 years? I don't know. But I honestly think the problem with the Ultimate Universe was that it was in constant competition with itself. The whole time we had the Ultimate Universe and the 616 Universe, and they ran concurrently alongside each other. Which works if both storylines are incredible. That's how you make that work. But if you have one that is doing terrible or is trying out crazy things that the majority of the audience doesn't like, you're literally giving somebody the other option. Okay, so in order to understand what I think happened with the Ultimate Universe versus the 616 Universe, let's look at the Coke versus New Coke argument, okay? Coke, if you don't know, a while ago tried to make a new product called New Coke. New Coke tanked the sales of Coke. So Coke also realized that they had made fans of that. So they launched Normal Coke alongside New Coke. And for a while, and it might still be going on, I don't drink Coke, uh, there might still be both Coke products going on. And if there isn't, whatever, Google it. Anyway, what I'm saying is when you have both those products alongside each other, you're just in competition with yourself. So if they're both incredible, you will sell both products. But if one is not as good as the other and you're on a limited budget, you're going to pick one. So what I think ended up happening was Ultimate Spider-Man came out and kicked off an amazing Ultimate Universe. Everyone wanted to be a part of this universe and read it from the beginning. But as time went on and it became the very thing that it was trying to be the counter of, confusing continuity, changing plot lines around, things just lasting longer than they should, people started to revert to just reading normal comic books. Well, normal Marvel comic books. Mainline Marvel comic Makes it sound... That's so hard to... See the problem here? You have to look at what happened in regular comic books at the time, okay? Events such as Avengers Disassembled happened and Civil War, which are still revered as some of the best Marvel storylines ever. So you've got the Ultimate Universe that came out with a bang. It's starting to wane. Original creators off of the project at this point. But normal Marvel Comics is doing things like Civil War. Civil War comes out, big gangbuster. Joe Quesada decides that they need to have a big crossover event in Ultima, uh, the Ultimate Universe. Ultimatum! Not as good. And basically, you pit yourself against yourself. New Coke versus Coke. Ultimate Universe versus the mainline Marvel 616 universe. Most comic book collectors that I know get multiple comic books, be it from Image, from Skybound, from DC, from Marvel. They don't just, like... It's not like your Xbox versus PlayStation war. People don't only buy Marvel. They buy a lot of other comics traditionally when you're doing the comic book collecting thing. So when you're telling me that I got to buy Spider-Man and his four books and Ultimate Spider-Man and the Ultimates universe and to know what's going on in the mainline universe, I also got to get Avengers. People are going to pick a side. And when the Ultimate universe starts to get worse and worse, people are just going to resort to the classic Marvel line. And that's what I think happened. They went up against themselves. Is that going to happen again? Potentially. Right now, Ultimate Spider-Man 1 came out, and it is incredible. But half the comments on my Ultimate Spider-Man video is, this is incredible, and Zeb Wells' run sucks. I wonder how many people are going to convert from Amazing Spider-Man to only buying Ultimate Spider-Man. It could start all over again. 
there's like four Spider-Man books going on right now. And if you don't like Amazing Spider-Man, what if you're just going to buy Miles Morales Spider-Man and Ultimate Spider-Man? What if you're going to buy only Ultimate Spider-Man and then you're going to try other comics? Because you're like, this is the Spider-Man that I want. So that's what I think the problem was with the original Ultimate Universe. It wasn't that it was inherently terrible. It was towards the end, but it, I don't think that's what killed it. I don't think Ultimatum would have even happened if the sales had maintained. The problem was they were just trying too many different things, things that people weren't always on board with. Spider-Man was the only thing really ultimately successful for the entire run of it. And regular Marvel was just putting banger after banger out. I mean, Avengers Disassembled, House of M, Decimation, Civil War. This was the 2010s, like the 2000s. All of those stories to this day are revered as like some of the best era of Marvel comics. It, they just competed with themselves. But let me know what you think down below in the comments. Did you enjoy the original Ultimate line? Did you read all the insanity that came out of it? What's your opinion on Ultimatum? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out our Ultimate Spider-Man video. I just covered it, and we added sound effects for the first time. Check me out over at twitch.tv slash gaming every Monday through Friday at about 2 p.m. Eastern if I'm here to talk about whatever you guys want. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Razor! Thank you, guys. I will see you next week with another problem with where we're going to nitpick something. I'm thinking we nitpick something obscure. Why isn't Starfire in a bikini anymore? Why are you still watching? Go watch another comic story and video. Thank you.